In the Philippines, SMEs are no small matter. With the challenges of the recent years, we want to help SMEs bounce back, grow, and succeed. The Philippine Star, together with its partners, gives you Naka Local. Love local, grow global. Naka Local is an advocacy program that will shine the spotlight on SMEs by showcasing their products. We will encourage more Filipinas to buy local. By featuring our artisans' craftsmanship, we will spread the word on Pinoy skill and creativity. By mounting specialized events, we will empower and motivate entrepreneurs with the right tools and insights to make their business grow. Nakaka Local is the latest initiative by the Philippine Star with the purpose of contributing to nation building. We believe SMEs are vital drivers of economic growth in the Philippines and so we plan to support them by offering ourselves as a platform for their creative products and their inspiring stories. We are excited to promote SMEs that are developing products and services that can stand the test of time. We want to connect with businesses eager to put the Philippines on the global map with their own creativity. We want to work with companies who can best represent our culture, history, or identity in what they make and promote. More importantly, they have to be ethical and socially responsible entrepreneurs who support sustainable practices in their operations. Nakaka Local is for every SME that wants a door of possibilities open for their growth and expansion. May Nakaka Local be the first of many future endeavors that inspire more Filipinos to support local brands and for the Philippine Star to showcase the ingenuity of our nation's world-class talent. Our goals are simple. Get more Filipinos to buy local and get more SMEs to go global. Nakaka Local can be the partner you need to grow your SME. Know more about us. Good evening, everyone! Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. It is my pleasure to have you all here at Nakaka Local Edu Serie Katulong. I am Dani Laurel. I will be your host for tonight. Thank you so much for spending this one hour with us in this forum. I know it's been very, very busy start of the year and you're taking the time out. Pero sama-sama tayong matututo at magde-develop ang ating mga negosyo tonight. We will be talking about one thing in particular. Particular, the tools that you need to help you in your businesses. And I know that just by being in this digital world, in this online forum, you already have an idea of what kind of tools we will be talking about here. Now, as part of the Philippine Stars Nakaka Local Initiative, our online forum today will take you on a journey towards digitalization and modern technology for businesses. Now, ladies and gentlemen, bago po tayo mag-start, we have a very special presentation to show to you from our partner, Entrego. Let's all watch this. We are Entrego. We bring your product from you to there, whenever and wherever. 
with business and e-commerce growing fast, we at Entrego promise to bridge the digital divide. We always deliver. We are committed to provide fast, on-time, safe, and reliable logistics services for our customers. We never stop. We are enabled by the latest technology that provides full operational visibility. Our fleet is equipped with GPS mobile devices. We move forward. We are everywhere. We are committed to expanding our network through widespread distribution centers across the Philippines. We promise to take your products from you to there, wherever there is. We are ready to deliver. Sa panahon ng pagbabago at teknolohiya, maraming oportunidad ang nagbubukas para sa isang kumpanya. Maliit man o malaki ito. Kaagapay mo ang entrego sa pagtulay ng iyong mamimili tungo sa iyong negosyo. Layunin ng entrego masolusyonan ang bawat suliranin sa fulfillment at logistics sa paraang tama at akma sa iyong pangangailangan. Gamit ng mga makabagong teknolohiya tulad ng auto-sorting machine na kayang magproseso ng higit 10,000 packages kada oras. At ang kakayahang serbisyohan ang higit 32,000 barangay sa Pilipinas. Sinisigurado naming bawat lakbay ng padala nyo ay nasa tamang kamay. Bawat sandali, ang padala nyo ang aming prioridad. Saan man sa Pilipinas, lungsod man o probinsya, Kami ay matapang na tumataya, mahatid lamang ang inyong padala. Sinisigurado din namin na ligtas ang komunidad sa pagbibigay ng mga solusyon katulad ng contactless payment, katuwang ang GCash at ang transakto. Hatid namin sa entrego ang pag-unlad mo. Entrego, from you to there. Hi, I'm home. Hey! Daddy, I made this for you. Oh, Thank you, sweetie. When you know what's important, sure thing. you give your most time. valuable resource, your time. For most, it's family. The package for Dad's on the way. So let's decorate the house before he sees. Okay. For Entrego, it's you. Entrego's tailored logistics fulfillment solutions drive efficiencies in your operations through extensive parcel management, freight forwarding, contract logistics, and warehousing. We know that your success is ours too. Our technology-driven end-to-end logistics solutions help you focus on growing your business without the hassle. Our network of distribution centers across the Philippines guarantees efficiency and security so you can reach your partners wherever they may be. Here. With Entrego as your partner, success becomes effortless. You will see dedication and compassion delivered to your doorstep every day. And that's fulfillment. This is our movement. This is our value. We are Entrego.
All right, maraming salamat to Entrego, of course, our partner in this event for showing us what it's like for a logistics company, no, to tap into the digital world and use such tools to make things faster and more efficient and more reliable. Now, kung iisipin natin during the pandemic, it was actually the logistics business that was first able to really change and be agile enough to adapt to the changing times no ladies and gentlemen unfortunately our next speaker mr george rieka of angkas cannot join our webinar due to a very urgent matter so we will miss you mr rieka hope that you can watch this afterwards and to all our viewers here don't worry because talagang exciting naman at madami tayong matututunan sa ating online forum dahil sasamahan tayo ng ilan sa mga kilala at tunay na matagumpay na mga individual pagdating sa negosyo. So for sure, marami sa ating lahat ng mga viewers ngayon ay curious about this open forum topic. Kaya naman na dito na ako and I will not let you wait further. Let us proceed to our online forum and let's welcome our panelists. All right. Our first panelist, she is the head of growth for Canva Philippines. I don't know if you used it, but I just love this app. This is a free online visual communication and collaboration platform with a mission to empower the world to design. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's all please welcome Miss Macy Litawa. Hello. Hi, and thanks for having me. Hi, Macy. Excited to have you here. I'm excited as well. <laughs> right, we'll you. be hearing more from you in just a bit. Meanwhile, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our next panelist, the COO of Taxumo. This is a tech company with a system that automates the computation, filing, and payment of taxes for self-employed individuals, professionals, and freelancers. Let's all please welcome on our virtual screens, Miss Ginger Arboleda. Hi, Miss Ginger. Daniel. Welcome. Hello, good evening, and good evening to all of the viewers as well and to my co-panelists. Good evening. I'm looking forward to how you're going to make tax sexy and digital. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ms. Ginger, we'll be hearing from you later on. Now let's bring in our third panelist. She is the growth leader of Peddler. This is a free POS and bookkeeping app for MSMEs in the Philippines, now with over 2 million downloads nationwide. A round of applause, please, for Miss Ayn Rand Justine Nepasina. Okay, I hope I said your name correctly, Miss Ira. Yes, good, uh, good evening, everyone. And yes, you uh, said it correctly. <laughs> All right, thank you so much and looking forward to learning more about Peddler in just thank a you. bit. And last but definitely not the least, this is a very unique panel because siya lang ang lalaki. Usually maraming lalaki and then minsan lang yung babae but this happens to be a female dominated session. He is the Chief Operating Officer over at Beam and Go. This is a leading movement that educates and enables overseas Filipino workers, OFWs, to achieve family resilience and financial security through an inclusive digital marketplace and financial ecosystem. Let's give it up for Mr. Albert Christian Go. Hi, Christian. Or do we call you Albert? Albert. Uh, and good evening, everyone. Uh, glad to be here and hope to have a fruitful discussion with the rest of the panel. All right, Albert. Now, please stay on the screen as we bring back our other panelists to the stage. Okay, there we have it. Again, Miss Macy, Ginger. Ira, there. Okay, everyone is in. All right. I know. Now, to everyone who is here, no, and I'm sure you really want to ask your questions. Um, we will try our very best towards the end of the panel discussion to address these questions. So while you're thinking or you want to do to say something very interesting, kahit comment lang, even if it's not a question. Feel free to use their comment box below and just say what you feel and then also post your questions and we will try to get back to you during the Q&A segment. All right, so let's get right to it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, before I begin, I wanted to do a very quick two-minuter round robin um, in terms of what you guys are doing. I mean, I know the likes of Canva, for example, but the other ones, I actually... Just check them out. I, I think I've had Christian in my show before, so I, I think that you know that is familiar to me. But for our viewers here, no, let, let's kick off with 
Um, Miss Macy, the most uh, common one, Canva. Give us a, a two minute spiel on what Canva is about because I know that it's changed quite a lot since, uh, since we first got introduced to this. It has. And uh, if you were having this panel about five years ago, this wouldn't have been the most common or more well-known tool out of them all. But I'm glad to hear that people are more and more familiar with Canva, the tool. It is a visual communications platform. And as a company, we empower the world. We aim to empower the world to design. And that means making art, making creativity and design as accessible as possible to everybody. With the right tools and the right resources, people make it easier uh, uh, we make it easier to to design. Okay, so who knew, you know, before Canva existed, we didn't think of design as some a way to actually make money, right, in our businesses. And now it's impossible not to think of aesthetics and how to make everything a marketing game. So wonderful introduction there on Canva. Let's move on to Miss Ginger Arboleda Taksumo. This it seems to me so useful i just went on your website and now i'm really wondering wait a second am i paying too much for my accountant okay, go ahead yeah so okay so for everyone's sake so taksumo is a web application and what we do is we help msmes professionals and freelancers with their collections and tax compliance so right now in our app uh we made Taxation, very easy for everyone. No? So, maliit mong negosyo or malaki. No? So, um, all you need to do is enter your income and expenses and the system automatically computes your tax dues for you. And you can also file and pay online. So, we are an accredited, we are an accredited tax software provider by the BIR. So, we've been working with the BIR since, um, since yeah, since we started in 2016. Yeah. All right, thanks for that, Ginger. And we'll dive deeper into that no? and exactly how that can help the MSMEs, why this is important. Uh, let's move on to Aria of uh, Peddler. Hello. Uh, so Peddler is a POS app made and designed to manage symbol bookkeeping and inventory management for MSMEs. Our mission at Pender is to build a digital infrastructure for micro and small businesses in Southeast Asia, starting with Sari Sari stores in the Philippines. We believe that every business, whether big or small, should have an easy and better way of managing their business using technology. Okay, thank you for that. And of course, last, last but not least, Beam and Go, Albert. Hi, uh, Beam and Go. I'd like to introduce Beam and Go again to everyone. Beam and Go is a social impact e-commerce marketplace and financial ecosystem. We also have an enterprise solutions uh, solutions for, for 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 large enterprises that need the services that we have, which are basically an e-commerce platform that's meant for the basic needs of Filipino families. The goal. Uh, first and foremost is really to empower the lives of Filipinos, majority of which are the OFWs, mm -hmm. uh, by giving them control over how their remittances are spent by their families back home. This seamless cross-border e-commerce platform allows the OFWs to make purchases for their families back home instead of sending cash. Mm -hmm. This ensures that their hard-earned money goes to where it's intended, solving the problem of spending abuse. More importantly, it does tie the bond between the OFWs and their families, making every member included in the financial decisions despite the distance. All right, thank you for that. Now, very interesting advocacy there. Okay, let's dive deeper into always thinking, of course, of our audience here. Now, you have MSMEs that are looking to go digital. Um, perhaps they haven't done so. That's why they're joining this forum, diba? Right? And they want to understand what tools are available and how easy is it, how seamless, how important how expensive, um, and is it something that they can do for their own businesses, no? So let's think of that while we try to 
to help people concretize their own businesses. And for our audience here, think about your own business. And each time you listen to our very esteemed panelists here, think of magagamit, magagamit ko ba yung product na yan? But also, you know, even if hindi mo magagamit, what can you learn from the ways that they're using digital digital tools? So let's kick off with um, Macy, no? with, with Canva. How important is... I don't know, being creative, being able to design for an MSME. I mean, is this just for specific products? It used to be for creatives, you know, industry. We love that. For weddings, for invitations, for posters, for... But now it's become small businesses. Kahit ano, is a Canva invite. Kahit a bowling, ano, diba? Is a Canva invite. Tell us, what changed the game here? What what happened? And how is this going in the Philippines? Okay, so um, Canva is a tool that aims to empower the world to design. I mentioned this earlier. And what this means is anybody, no matter the skill level, um, is the ideal user for Canva. So yeah. uh, uh, you, you mentioned earlier that it used to just be for creatives, but now people use it for everyday purposes, like invitations and um, like, so particularly for wedding invitations, thank you cards, birthday cards, and the like. But more than that, they, um, entrepreneurs use it to promote their products and their services. Uh, what makes a tool like this easy is that we have basically the resources that one would need to create a beautiful design all in one place. So a few years ago, design softwares were crazy expensive and they were complex. So if you didn't have the right tools to learn of specific software, it makes it particularly difficult for you to pr produce something beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, but what happened, uh, so Canva, making everything accessible, brings all of these resources all in one place. You have templates, you have millions of images, you have a drag and drop platform that makes it easy for you to combine all of these elements and download or publish them online. So a, a person who used to take hours or days to even promote some or create a marketing material that, um, to promote their product could actually produce 10, 20 times more than that in the same amount of time with, with the ease of use um, tools that we have. Parang it's jump starting your marketing without even having to have a marketing budget, right? I mean, yeah. these are things that only bigger companies... Um, people that have creatives on board are able to do. And now any business whatsoever, even a sari-sari store, even a, diba, a small milk tea shop can create their own marketing projects. with, uh, with Yeah. With um, Danny, if I may, I also just wanted to add that you can start out using free tools in general. So Canva is free yeah, to that's use what for I'm everybody. Using. <laughs> <laughs> Canva is free to use for everybody. So even if you're still finding your way around the platform, you're still not sure if this is what your business needs, all of these resources are made available for free. Um, and if you see your business growing and you find yourself needing more and more um, productivity tools and collaboration tools as uh, as time goes by, you then can upgrade it to Canva Pro or eventually get your team on board and work with them. But essentially, like if you're still starting out, you have no budget for marketing materials. You can use a tool like Canva to create your marketing materials in minutes, basically. Exactly. Well, guys, feel free to jump in, no? But I mean, for my experience, I even feel like because of Canva, I start getting ideas for not necessarily my business, but what I want to do. Diba? Even, let's say, uh, my, my own brand, I start thinking, oh, maybe I should make it this font. <laughs> maybe I should make it this color. And then it tells me how I'm supposed to do my work. Diba? Instead of, I don't have that concept to begin with. And then you, you see that there are these concepts. So what's amazing here is that some you know it's it used to be intimidating now it's like oh my gosh i have a start and then you can start tweaking that slowly thanks for sharing that no so something to be keeping in mind here that people can actually do quite quickly and get the app very for free even let's move on to, to ginger for a while no um ta taxing i said make it sexy for us <laughs> why Let, let's go back to the basics on why it's so important 
to pay the right taxes at the right time uh, in a country where I have to be honest, even myself, I'm, I'm more or less a freelancer. Right? I have different mm -hmm. kinds of jobs. Um, I'm a professional. I'm a VAT paying professional. I'm BIR registered. It's so complicated. It's so hard. And it took me a couple of years before I even got to do all the filings and stuff properly. You know? Give us an idea of uh, you know, why this is so important for MSMEs. Yeah. So Danny, just like you know, when I started, I really didn't know anything about taxes. Kasi diba, tayo, when we want to start a business, we get into it because of, uh, let's say, a problem that we wanted to solve, no? Or may nakita tayong gusto natin gawin. Like, gusto ko mag-bake, gusto ko mag-tinda, diba? Gusto mag-online selling. So it taxation or compliance isn't really something that we think of right mm -hmm. away, no? But it's very important because, number one, Later on, if you want to grow your business, you will need to issue ORs, no, official receipts, and sales invoices so that you can uh, get bigger clients. No? Number two, in terms of like for your financial history, um, in the Philippines, because we don't talk about credit scores that much, no? credit scoring, or like how you are in terms of your financial health, uh, especially when it comes to business, more pa nga personal, uh, personal finance. Diba? But it's very important because later on, when you plan to take out loans, if you want to enjoy the fruits of your labor, diba? Mm -hmm. Siyempre, kikita ka, you want to use it, let's say, to buy a house, to buy a car. Hindi mo naman ikakash yung buong, alam mo yun, oh. millions of pesos, diba? So, you will have to take out loans. And loans, um, the best interest rates are given to people with financial history. Mm. So it's, um, it, you don't start pay. And one of the things that you will present is your, are your tax forms to show uh -huh. kinita mo, no? So you build that. It's not na parang gusto ko yung loan, so I will pay now. Hindi eh. You have to build that history, no? So history takes like years to build, diba? Usually three years yan. Mm. Uh, another thing is, during the pandemic, people who got ayuda no, from the government are people who are registered in the basically the system. So you, if you are registered as a small business owner, as a freelancer, you have the proper documentation, you get to enjoy these kinds of benefits. And um, another thing, visa, and dami, di ba? Madami naman talaga when you think about it. Eh. Marami naman benefits, no? Um, visa, when you, when you want to get visa, when you want to travel exactly. abroad... Okay. Yes, you need to present all of these uh, tax forms as well. And just, of course, the basic eh, issue of the BIR might just crack down <laughs> on just the that. business. <laughs> mawalan ka lang talaga ng business, no? So, yes. but this is, of course, I mean, you can do it all by yourself if you want to. Diba? You can go on the website of BIR, download the forms, line up there. Um, what you're doing is a much more efficient way to save time because if you have that time on your hands, you can use that time to focus on the business, diba? Right? And, yes. and use that time wisely. So it's actually, it's more of an investment actually in something that you need to do anyway. And it might take you hours, days to be able yeah. to to do the same thing that you guys are already doing. Okay, to, so... Yeah, to build up on that, Danny, no? It's, it's actually very easy because we built the system for a person who doesn't really know how to compute. No, yung mm -hmm. ganoan. So just yeah. track your income and expenses and it automatically computes for you. And that's, I think, one of the issues no, when starting a business. Nakaka-intimidate yung tax part, di ba? I think it's something that kaya people just keep small na lang. Eh. They don't want to expand kasi once mm -hmm. you have to try to start doing all these filings, parang ayaw mo na lang magka-business, di ba? Keep it small na lang. So, I think both of you, no, Macy and Ginger, uh, tackled on, on two things that are very important. Um, time, saving time um, with your platforms. Um, and also, you said the words empowerment. So, control. Taking control of the situation instead of leaving it to, to the other hands. Diba? You can actually do it even if you have no experience whatsoever. Now, speaking of that, I looked at that Peddler website, no? Ira, and Arya, sorry, Arya. <laughs> I'm confused with how to say your name. Arya. And it's fantastic. Two million people are using this app. Um, give us an idea of who are right for the picking. Sinong mga types of businesses ang pwedeng gumamit nito? Is it just those that are just starting out that they don't have any systems in place yet? 
Or are there, you know, medium-sized businesses that have been there a couple of years that they can start using your platform and start digitalizing? All right, hi. So um, for the target uh, market of Pender, it's actually all business types. Um, it's not really limited lang naman uh, to sari-sari stores, but all business types, kayang-kaya siyang i-cater ng Pender. So what's nice about Pender is that, um, like what I said earlier, it digitalizes our MSMEs kasi they get to experience yung digitalize yung pag-monitor ng inventory nila. Like at one glance, kita na agad. Ano yung mga madami pang stock at ano pa yung mga kailangan nilang i-replenish. Aside mm-hmm. from this, madali na rin for them to see how much they earned in a day, in a week, or in a month. Uh, kita na agad if earning ba talaga yung business or hindi pa, pa, hindi pa siya ROI, kumbaga. Uh, mm-hmm. There are also some features of Peddler and meron rin kami mga tinatawag na wise ways to earn which are, or, which are earning opportunities for our users. And also okay. just wanted to add, I'm sorry. Yeah, go, go, go ahead. Okay, so just wanted to add lang rin, um, we have this feature na we call Credit Ledger, which is used to monitor yung mga utang. Like, sino yung mga may utang sa'yo, kailan wow. sila ng utang, and kailan sila nagbayad, magano pa balance nila, and such. It's actually my favorite um, feature. <laughs> Our users love it as well kasi mas napapadali yung paniningil nila ng utang. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, meron kaming ka-pedler who shared na, he tried to click yung remind button which is a feature of the credit ledger na magre-remind dun sa may utang sa yo na okay it's time to pay. Then effective siya kasi pumunta si yung may utang dun sa kanya to settle okay. the credit. So yun um kasi 'di ba parang one factor yan bakit nagko-close yung mga businesses is hindi natatrack yung mga utang nila utang sa kanila properly um hindi sila nakakasingil which leads um the business owner nothing to replenish kasi wala silang cash flow so yun just wanted to share that rin <laughs> i love that you know because i've also been teaching no and the next will be of course uh, albert but i've been teaching also um OFW's financial literacy for more than 10 years and there's really this idea na nangungut pag nangungutang to close friends or relatives hindi nagsusulat, di ba? Or nakakahiyang maningil. And what we always try to say is that's the opposite. Dapat yung mga ganyan sinusulat because those are the relationships you want to keep, di ba? Those are the relationships na ayaw mong masi- masira. And precisely this kind of platform that allows you not to not have to confront, di ba? Pero in, in a way, it's very part, no, specific. Um, actually, helps people with disagreements in the future, right? And same it's relationship. actually a great idea, Danny. Oh, yeah. uh, because because you can collect and send the reminders. You know, uh, marami rin yung utang sa amin, hindi pa nagbabayad. But for, for years, it, every time I would would ping these people to, to pay me back, they, they come up with all sorts of reasons. But mm-hmm. at the end, we know that the judicial system here, wala, wala ata nakukulong eh. Na may utang. So it's hard for us at the end of the day, um, tayo, pa yung, tayo pa yung mahirapan to collect, right? So, so, so in, in the case of um, the, the, the app of Peddler, I think that's a very good uh, ledger, the, the credit ledger that you have because it has the functionality to be able to send the reminders to them, okay, it's time for you to pay or uh, maybe it's imputed in the way your system is and it it, it reminds people para may ano man sila. <laughs> Tsaka adapted siya to the Philippine culture then, di ba? But it, because actually, you know, it's a misconception that people don't want to pay. I think people also do want to pay. Sometimes they just have a hard time. They need to be reminded and nahihiya lang din sila, di ba, to ask for extension. So this is a way to maybe automate it and make it a bit less daunting for people. And tama nga naman, isa siyang issue, no, for MSMEs. Mangungutang ka to start your business to begin with. And then meron ding mangungutang sa'yo. Uh, to be able to use your product. So, sistema lang, di ba? <laughs> to be able, like like you mentioned, na ma- makolekta. Let's just be professional here. Now, speaking of which, no, Christian, you you really had this issue um, with remittances. Now, let's not mm. just give the money like a windfall and then bahala na. Because you're right. I mean, this, this is hard-earned money from OFWs um, that needs to be, that can be used 
for businesses, for investments, for things like that, or for consumption and in the right way, no? So, so tell us how what has changed since you've started Beam and Go. Um, oh. Have you seen mo ba na iba na nga yung behaviors of, yes. of those in your platform? Go ahead. Uh, at the time, 2014, when I first started it with my co-founders, uh, there was no such thing as e-wallets and the, the, the process of remittances back in Singapore or Hong Kong are mostly over the counter. Mm. Uh, the Filipinos back then were were very much under bank or uh, non-bank. And, and now we're seeing that transition. In fact, I see that the turning point happened in the pandemic when most of the Filipinos are now using GCash or uh, yeah, in, in a limited way, they have bank accounts. And I'm seeing it now with the central banks. And you're very much into the business news. You'd know that Felipe, uh, Felipe Medaglia just said that the goal for 2023 is 50% of our transactions are already going to be cashless this year. And then 70% would own bank accounts. So that's one thing that I see has changed because the Filipinos have become more digitized. And in a... Hirap kami. Nung bago kami, when we're selling our products and asking them to pay online, most of them do not have a bank account. There was no Instapay for them to be able to do bank transfers. There's no aggregators that existed other than probably a few of them like Dragon Pay. But now, marami na uh, that we see uh, uh, within the Philippines or also abroad. That's why I'm seeing that the change has, has already happened. In fact, I see that the Philippines might be at the forefront of digitiz digitalization. And I see that even the, uh, the, the OFWs who are working overseas, in fact, our mantra in Beam and Go has changed. Okay. Most of these OFWs, uh, they worked overseas. They, they have problems to be able to manage their own finances. That's why they end up working overseas instead of one contract or three years, they end up staying there for over 13 and a half years. In fact, we validated that through our own study. And we did that study back in 2020 with UNICEF. We were one of the uh, grantees of UNICEF. When we did that study, it was very alarming that a lot of the OFWs, their salary actually increases while working overseas. Mm -hmm. Pero in their, their state of uh, finan financial state with their families, is they're still struggling. Really? So we know yeah. that there's a... Correct. So our goal, what has changed is that we wanted them to, to educate them uh, mm -hmm. through a plan. First, we have a marketplace that provides the most basic way for them to learn financial literacy and budgeting. Mm -hmm. Secondly, is to have our, our what we call Beam and Go Academy, whereby every month we would run these uh, talks on budgeting, financial literacy, how, how to prepare for your uh, Christmas pasalubong, then we'll run these sessions as early as January to teach them how to do it. Uh, na sila umutang at the end. Uh, and then we also have another program which, which we launched last year. It's actually a reseller program among OFWs. And okay. we were able to get 80 of our customers become micro entrepreneurs. They, they were using our platform and they were actually distributing products of Beam and Go to their friends uh, overseas. And, and some of them were really earning a lot there. Right now, this, this program, uh, we, 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 we actually put it uh, to a pause for the first month or two this year. Uh, mm -hmm. But we, we will relaunch it by, by end of February of this year. But it's very, very promising because we're seeing a lot of these o OFWs double their take-home pay uh, wow. Because of the, the 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 business that they they were able to venture into to be and go. Okay, thank you for sharing that. No, you know what? I also hosted an event where they said because I was asking about financial literacy, de ba? Parang we keep having classes, we keep trying to do to do the even the government has been trying a lot, de ba? To and then still, bakit ganon pa rin yung state ng OFWs nagpapadala tapos hindi naman nag improve de ba? Hindi sila nakakabalik. Why is that? Um, and then, you know, one, one of the finlets, which, uh, fin, fintechs, sort of same like you, they said, you know what, let's just let them use the technology first, right? And then 
if you actually, which is interesting to me, parang kahit di ka marun mag-budget, once you start seeing the debit and credit and the money, <laughs> bigla kang natututong mag-budget because you kind of enjoy having savings after a while, di ba? And then I guess that use case starts making you act in a certain way. So I, it just reminded me of... Actually, you can use technology, uh, Danny, to be able to encourage them. Meaning, if nakikita nila, oh, ganito na yung commissions nila or the rebates that they're getting from, uh, let's say, Beam and Go, our platform, then nakikita nila every month it's growing for them. So you can use the visual aids to have, let's say, a calculator on how much you'll be earning if you sell this much of this product or that product. So that's what we've been doing, which, you know, magandang retention niya. Uh, when, when you do something like that, when you are able to present it in a most easy way. Because one thing that I see as a challenge to between like the banking institutions and also the uh, Filipinos in general is the way the, the application forms are presented. It's very highfalutin. Uh-oh. It's hard for them to understand. They need to provide so much requirements. I think the easiest could be the mobile wallets. That's why the, the, the adoption is very high. But other banks have high, you know, mataas pa yung minimum balance. And if you send from one bank to another bank, you also get at least 25, 40 pesos. So which I think actually that's a fundamental problem. I think the businesses need to understand if you want adoption, you, got, you, got, you have to find ways to lower the fees so, so that we get more people to get uh, to be banked. But, you know, that's a, that's a different advocacy of mine that I think <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Now, I wanted to ask, no, because on that same note, it, it all makes sense to have these apps. Uh, you know, it saves time, saves money, empowerment. But is the state of the technology, of the infrastructure, security enough in the Philippines right now? Na parang, you know, we're going to, as a small and small business, I'm putting a lot of my money in in these kinds of apps, diba? And how am I sure that this will deliver? Hindi siya magbe-break down? Um, hindi mawawala yung data ko, diba? Hindi ako mawawala ng pera? Um, give, give us an idea of how how secure, how good our infrastructure is here to to handle this. Macy, let's go to you first. Well, um, I, I also just wanted to add to, to Albert's earlier point that to get people to use a particular product, people can be encouraged to learn on the go. But I particularly uh, appreciate and also um, associate and align what we are doing with Canva with some of the things that they are doing, which is also sharing the learning resources. And I, I think Taksuma also does the same because it's particularly important to not just have the resources available, it's also to help people understand the value of the products that they are using. Now, mm. the infrastructure might not be my area of expertise, but what I do know is that we try to make up for it. So even if it might not necessarily be the most ideal state, um, there are ways for us to still help people find out more or like help them explore tools that can add value to their lives and their businesses through the learning and and connecting them with the communities that that we also are building so for canva for example we have a growing community of filipino creatives and um earlier to again to albert's point that showing them the potential of a tool like this is also something that is very evident and visible in our community so people share their experiences using a tool like canva and it helps inspire others to actually do the same so yeah all right, thank you for that. So some ways that can still circumvent that. Ginger, what about you? Where are we when it comes to that? Especially those in the provinces, no? That yeah. probably sila nga yung dapat uh, matulungan in terms of filing taxes yeah. dito in Manila. It's pretty easy to to have all of these logistics do it for us, but in, in other parts of the country, how how can you address that? Yeah. So it, to your point first on security no, or being safe online, I think it's a two-way thing. No, it's it's really uh, educating people about like what's what's in, here in the internet. No, so parang the fear kasi of of trying out apps or uh, all of these apps. No, it really stems from the fact that they don't understand kasi how how 
uh, data is used no? in the back end or baka naman pag binigay ko to, it's gonna be spread to uh, a lot of people, diba? So, ganun, no? So, yung safety nila is what they think of. But I think for apps like us, a key thing is really to be transparent about, like, your processes, like, how how you handle data. Kami, when we got, kasi we, are, we have a license on operator of payment systems from the BSP. To get that license, you really have to undergo, Danny, like, a lot of things. You really have to, like, undergo AMLA training, all of this. Um, You have to get certification from NPC, no, um, on how you handle data. So, I believe naman all of the apps, like, even the people here with their apps no, are up and up, no, when it comes to, like, regulations and regulatory mm-hmm. requirements. So, it's really about education, eh. It's really about educating people, uh, like, how to handle their data online. Now, to your um, question naman about like how data is or how like apps are being used in the provinces. I think um, I think it's better. The pandemic really was a driver, a big driver, you know, for people to adopt to to all of these apps that are available in the market and to test it out. Um, and during the pandemic, we actually that was our uh, the year that we grew significantly by around two hundred percent. No, it was a uh, big growth. We had a big growth for Taxumo during that time. Because uh, okay. you have choice because you're online, right? with all of yeah. the lockdown and all. So I think all of the the uh, industry uh, key players I mean, and stakeholders are helping each other get to that point that we can be like we can be competitive no, in that area. Okay, thanks for that. Now, Era, very similar question no, to you because these are perfect. Your app is perfect. For those that have nothing yet, diba? Parang it's, it's the best first stop nga eh. What about in those areas na wala masyadong internet or the connectivity is, is not so good? Is there going to be problems with downtime or challenges in this in these areas? Hello! So, um, Pedder actually works offline, so our users can still access and use the app without internet connection. Um, okay. as for the saving yung sa data, the um, ano naman, parang nasa save naman siya, and then the only time, parang by the time na they get um internet connection or pag nag-online sila, parang magsisync naman siya to the application. So, um, all your data naman are safe, and we mm-hmm. actually have an active um. Uh, community group on Facebook and which is also led by our um, user experience support uh, team. So if ever mayroong mga inquiries or mga parang nire-raise regarding such issues, issues um, we're very happy to assist. The, the team is very happy to assist naman our users. So just like what I said, um, Pedder works offline. So um, users na may limited connections to internet can still use the application. We have merchants to over 1,400 cities and municipalities across the Philippines. Um, we actually have a user in Bantayan Island, Cebu. Wow. And we were, yeah, we were overwhelmed nung na-feature siya ng Philippine Star. Um, he's actually a food cart owner who uses Pedler app to track his sales. So, um, wala namang parang nagiging issue kasi, again, um, it works offline. Amazing. I mean, you'd be amazed by the types of businesses and how tech-savvy people can be in the Philippines. I was actually, parang someone pitched to me um, a street vendor cart where it was related but to an NFT. <laughs> I was like, wow, <laughs> this is beyond. Um, so pretty amazing there. Now, Albert, I wanted to ask the same question but in another way. No? Um, how did you get people? Because you said, I think you said 2014, ba? You, you started something like that, no? Correct, um, correct. 2014. How did you get people on your platform? Um, especially since there were, this was way before the pandemic when people were tech savvy. And like you mentioned, this was way before the Gcashes and Mayas of the world where you know they, they were using such apps. And for our viewers here, how do you how do they encourage their non tech savvy customers to to join or to to use the okay. apps for their business? Uh, for so for your first question, that's that's pretty interesting. As I, I take back to uh, go back to memory lane, back <laughs> in twenty fifteen. Well, our initial challenge was really getting all the the supermarkets and the basic needs uh, firms like yung mga pharmacies to onboard with Beam and Go. But we realized that it took me about a few years to get most, if not all, of the groceries to partner with us because at that time, most of these 
groceries and supermarkets were also very much territorial in their nature. I think hindi naman, hindi naman masyado open dati yung mga, even the biggest businesses, eh, but they changed their tone, especially during the pandemic. Uh, that part actually took us quite a while to get most, and I had to travel even in near the rebel areas in Mindanao to partner with some of the bigger groceries there. Uh, but it was a journey for me to be able to get them uh, to believe them in the mission of of Beam and Go to support small businesses, to support also OFWs and fellow Filipinos. In terms of the marketing overseas, uh, at the beginning we were attending a lot of these events. Uh, every year in in certain countries, they always have a Philippine Independence Day event, and that's wh- where we started to get our initial customers in. In Hong Kong, it's always held. Uh, it's always held in in Central uh, Central Station, uh, mm-hmm. and you can see them every every weekend. Siguro tens of, I would say easily tens of thousands you'd see yes. there, uh, and and we would we would go there. Uh, we would go there. We would meet. We would interview people. We would get them to sign up uh, and and register for Beam and Go. We also had partners there. So our very first few partners are actually the traditional remittances. That would mm-hmm. offer our product as a as a value added product to their clients. So we're not saying cash is wrong, but we're offering a product that the remittances themselves can offer to their clients. Oh, why not? Let's say if they know oh, si si Nanay Nanay Lita is from let's say Bohol, and then we have a supermarket in Bohol, they know how to cross sell the products of Beam and Go to their clients. So that's how we started. We also went to Japan. Uh, we also went to uh, Singapore. And, and then later on, uh, our, our users and customers became our super users. They're, they ended up being the ones to spread it out overseas. So right now we have around 300,000 registered wow. members. More active members are around 13,000. 13, but it's it's good. We're still small. But, yeah. but it's... a uh, it's a good, uh, I guess it's a good journey for us and, and we're happy where we're at now. <laughs> yeah, and you know, that those amount of users that actually, well, it's a multiplier effect in the, the ones that they do affect in the country, right? So, I mean, the amount of, of people abroad, even if it's it's 10% of the country, it's affecting the entire economy. So, so good job with that. Ladies and gentlemen, we're down to our last question. We only have seven minutes left, so let's keep it around two minutes each. Um, just final tips no, for our viewers here on where to start. Actually, if you look uh, online or whatever or in all these forums, ang dami-daming tips, ang dami-daming apps that they could be doing. And of course, you have limited resources. You wish you could do everything. Where to start for those that are just kicking off, um, especially in using tools or shifting to digitalization in their businesses? Macy? Uh, hi. Okay. So I have um, two kinds of tips. The first one is the, about the branding. So if you are starting out and you haven't really quite figured out what, what it is that you want to communicate to your kind of audience, the first tip I would give is to clearly define your product and your why. So you don't necessarily need to invent something new, but your customers obviously need a reason to choose you over your competitors. Another tip for uh, from the marketing and business side of things is, would be to research. Um, who are your competitors? Where can you find your customers? How can you reach them on social media? And how, of course, do you promote your business once it's up? Now, from the other side of things, uh, Canva, of course, is a tool that not just only provides you the resources, but also uh, the inspiration. Um, to create the marketing materials in general. So if you're not really sure where to start, we actually have a, a, a hub of free resources called Canva for Negocio. It's specifically designed for Filipino MSMEs where we provide marketing kits um, from social media posts to Facebook posts and the like uh, that you can use for your business even as you're starting out. So if you're not really sure where to start, you can start with one of our templates or you can even click on one of our videos to help get you started. Thank you, Macy. I love that. You're right. Know your brand and do your research, diba? Di lang basta-basta. And that's a big part of, of the success of any business, of course, knowing your identity. Um, and let, let's go, of course, to Ginger of Taksumo. Yeah. How to start? 
Yeah, so I think, Danny, one of the things that I've um, realized as an entrepreneur is that you have to constantly learn. No? So you have to constantly explore with regard to digital tools. Just just try try out different apps, try out different things. No? And you'll, you'll see naman what fits mm. dun sa processes mo, no? sa, sa gusto mong mangyari no? or gusto mong ma-accomplish. In terms of um, the financial stuff, the the regulate uh, the regulations and taxation no, in general, um, you don't need to worry about that. So there are entities like us. No, um, we are here to help you. We're the friendly face that you can run to when you have questions on taxation, on what to pay, how to comply, how to register your business. So we're always here for you to answer all of your questions regarding that. At the end of the day, naman, don't think about like. I don't want to f- file or declare the correct amount. No, what we should have is a more uh, is a mindset of abundance. Mm. Look at business as something that I would want to grow and I would want to succeed in the later on. So if you're in that kind of mindset, you won't think of that. Eh? You'll you'll ask for other people's help, like us. Now you'll ask for help or or. Um, yeah, no, and then and then just focus on growing your business. Focus on the goal, no, and just go for it. Yeah. Okay, I love that. It reminds me of a friend that I had. She's, I think, from from Norway, and she said, "I love paying taxes." <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> because the damn it, I'm getting benefits. Like, oh, oh yes. that's a first. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I wish that it could be that way. Yeah. All right, so learning, libre to try it out. I mean, lose nothing if you do your research and try to learn. Okay, and uh, Ira, your tips. All right. So, um, uh, aside from the ones that was mentioned earlier, um, it's really to plan your goal. Uh, how do you see your business short term and long term? Uh, kasi mm-hmm. by having this, it will be easier for you to map out your next action steps para ma launch yung business and kita mo yung progression. So, if you want to start your business, also just wanted to take this opportunity. Um, you might also want to try Peddler. It's very easy. Um, any business types, kaya ng kaya siyang Kayang kaya niyo magsimula. <laughs> and I already have some comments here from Pilgrim Bookstore. Watching inside my online bookstore in Bacoor City, Cavite. Planning to explore Peddler. <laughs> so there, you're adding 2 million and 1 uh, users na. Alright, and finally, to wrap it up, uh, Albert of Beam & Go. What's your tip? So yeah, I'll, I'll focus uh, on your role as the CEO or the founder of the business. I think as the CEO... Uh, you need to look at three things. One is funding. <laughs> Second is is hiring of people. And third is strategy. Uh, it's important for the CEO to be able to find the right people to work and that he, can, he or she can trust. And in my case, you know, I think uh, being able to have a few good people that you can trust that would be fully committed to the company would, would, would actually take you uh, far, far more than, than, than having to do all of the work yourself. Uh, and also understanding where you're good at as, as an individual and as a leader. Some of you who are more technical, some, some, some founders are more technical or more, let's say, into programming. Let's say they're running a, an e-commerce platform or portal. Then you know where you need to focus on as a leader. But, but I think the, the, the process of doing business is actually great. I used to be also an employee. I moved from, you know, from the Philippines to Singapore. I've done so many types of jobs from uh, working in, in marketing, communications. I moved to the treasury team of one of the biggest banks. And, and I, I, I learned so many things as an employee. But, but, but starting your own business, the fulfillment is so much different when you know that you're impacting like a greater uh, majority of people. And, and for me, that's been something that I will not uh, regret. <laughs> so there. I love that. Yeah, thank you for ending on that bigger picture note no, on, on what we are trying to achieve here. So thank you so much for our panelists here. Branding research, learning, uh, mindset of abundance, planning your goals, 
hiring the right people and thinking, of course, of the bigger picture and why you're doing this. So maraming salamat to our panelists and thank you everyone for sharing your time with us. We have reached the end of our forum. Maraming salamat, um, of course, to our speakers and panelists, but also to our sponsors who supported the vision of this event. I would just like to acknowledge them. So this is, again, Nakaka-Local Edu Serie Katulong. This was brought to you by the Philippine Star in cooperation with Angkas, Ortiga Smalls, RCBC Discartec, Toyota, Robinson Smalls, SM Super Malls, Vista Mall, All Home and Coffee Project, All Day Supermarket, and of course, with the support of GCash, PLDT, San Miguel Corporation, Shell, Tri Motors Technology Corporation, VDO, and Trego, HP, Salwater Incorporated, and SGV and Go, and also with our partner organizations, DTI Philippines, thank you. We have Go Negosyo, Ayala Enterprise Circle, Pili Ani PH, Rush, Yabang Pinoy, Vernew, All Learn, and Startup Village. And of course, our media partners, GMA, ABS-CBN News, One News PH, and Page One Media. Muli, maraming salamat po for tuning in and joining our online forum. My name is Dani Laurel. I was your host. This has been Nakakalokal Edu Serie Katulong Online Forum. Have a wonderful evening ahead. In the Philippines, SMEs are no small matter. With the challenges of the recent years, we want to help SMEs bounce back, grow, and succeed. The Philippine Star, together with its partners, gives you Nakalokal. Love local, grow global. Nakalokal is an advocacy program that will shine the spotlight on SMEs by showcasing their products, we will encourage more Filipinas to buy local. By featuring our artisans' craftsmanship, we will spread the word on Pinoy skill and creativity. By mounting specialized events, we will empower and motivate entrepreneurs with the right tools and insights to make their business grow. Nakaka Local is the latest initiative by the Philippine Star with the purpose of contributing to nation building. We believe SMEs are vital drivers of economic growth in the Philippines, and so we plan to support them by offering ourselves as a platform for their creative products and their inspiring stories. We are excited to promote SMEs that are developing products and services that can stand the test of time. We want to connect with businesses eager to put the Philippines on the global map with their own creativity. We want to work with companies who can best represent our culture, history, or identity in what they make and promote. More importantly, they have to be ethical and socially responsible entrepreneurs who support sustainable practices in their operations. Nakaka Local is for every SME that wants a door of possibilities open for their growth and expansion. May Nakaka Local be the first of many future endeavors that inspire more Filipinos to support local brands and for the Philippine Star to showcase the ingenuity of our nation's world-class talent. Our goals are simple. Get more Filipinos to buy local and get more SMEs to go global. Nakakalokal can be the partner you need to grow your SME. Know more about us. Thank you.